21. Alcohol is removed from the bloodstream by a series of metabolic reactions. The first reaction produces acetaldehyde. Then other products are formed. The following data have been determined for the rate at which alcohol is removed from the blood of an average male, although individual rates can vary by 25 to 30 percent. Women metabolize alcohol a little more slowly than men. Fun. (laughs) But here's the data that they gave us, right? Uh, They gave us a data table, and we're talking about alcohol here. So this is, I'm assuming... (laughs) Oh, well, it says it right here, C2H5OH. This is drinking alcohol. So anyone over the age of 21 in the United States, this is your drinking alcohol. There's a lot of different alcohols out there, right? But the one that we drink um, is C2H5OH. And the scientific term for this type of alcohol is ethanol. So it is not the isopropyl alcohol that you might have in your home or... Um, which is rubbing alcohol, by the way, or methanol. Now, fun fact, back in the Prohibition era, right, for United States history, uh, there was an era in which alcohol, ethanol, was banned. However, methanol was not. So instead of drinking, you know, actual alcohol, uh, they drank methanol, which is only one carbon away. And, uh, yeah, they went blind, (laughs) So, really bad time. But anyway, methanol, one carbon away, makes you go blind. Ethanol, two carbons, makes you have a good time if you are over uh, 21. And, uh, you know, we do not advise drinking methanol, rubbing alcohol. That is a big no, 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 no. Um, And only for, you know, over 21 alcohol. And be responsible. Always be responsible. Okay. So let's keep going. They gave us a chart, right? They gave us a chart and they want us to determine the rate law, the rate constant, and the overall order for this reaction. Yikes, this is going to be a biggie, but uh, generally on your tests and quizzes, you will get some sort of chart question where they ask for the rate law, rate constant, and the overall order. I got you guys. Have no fear. Christina is here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to use this chart in order to determine the rate law. Now, when they give you a chart and they're asking for the rate law, they're secretly asking you for something else. So if they want you to write out the rate law, what they're secretly asking you for is to just find the orders. So anytime that you have a chart and they're asking for the rate law, all we have to do is find those orders. Now, what do we mean by orders? Well, comes from the general rate law, which is this, right? Rate equals K times the concentration of their reactants raised to the orders. So that's what we're solving for. We want to solve for those exponents. But now how do we do that with 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 the chart? Well, this is where we're going to make a ratio. And what we're going to do is we're going to set one rate law over another rate law. Now, it doesn't really matter which trials you pick. There seems that there are three trials here. We have a specific concentration of the alcohol and we have a out, you know, an output of a rate, right, with that certain concentration. So we have trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3. If you want to call these experiments, that's fine as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one trial's values over another. Now, the easy way to go about this is to always put the higher rate over the lower rate. It just makes the math easier to work with. So I'm going to be looking for these rates, and I want to always put the higher one over the lower one. Now, in this case, they're all the same, 2 times 10 to the negative second. So if you want to think about it as higher rate over lower rate, you can. But since all of these are exactly the same, you can also do the same thing for your concentrations, where you pick the higher one and divide it by the lower one. Now, it does not matter for this case which trials we pick. Just put the higher one over the lower one. 
So maybe I'll choose, in this case, we'll choose maybe trial one and trial three. Now you could have picked trial one and two, could pick two, two and three. It does not matter. Um, your answer will be the same at the end of the day. Now since 4.4 is higher than 2.2, right? 4.4 times 10 to the negative second is higher than 2.2 times 10 to the negative second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put trial number one divided by trial number three. And that means that we're just gonna basically have the rate law for trial one, all the information that we can put in, uh, and divided by the rate law for trial three. So we're gonna use this formula now for all of our trial one numbers. Now it starts off with the rate, and here's the rate for trial one. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative second equals the K value. The K value is a rate constant. Now the rate constant, um, they didn't give it to us, right? And somewhere along the way, we have to find the rate constant. So we don't know it yet, so we're just gonna say K. And then this is times by the concentration of the reactants. So for trial one, the concentration was the 4.4, right? So we're gonna say times by 4.4 times 10 to the negative second. And this is raised to the orders. Now I don't know the order, so I'm just gonna label it as a variable, x. And we're gonna do the same thing for the denominator. We're gonna use that general rate law and plug in the numbers that we know. So for trial number three now, the rate is the same, 2.0 times 10 to the negative second, this should be a negative two, equals, we still don't know that k value, so k, times by the concentration, which is the 2.2 times 10 to the negative second. And now we still don't have that order, but it's the same order for that reactant. So if I label it x for here, I'm gonna label it x for there. And now it just comes down to simplifying and doing the math. Now the great thing is that if you have a k divided by a k value, even though we don't know it, what's gonna happen? Yeah, that's gonna cancel out, so bye bye to that. And two, in this case, two times 10 to the negative second divided by two times 10 to the negative second, we get a, you got it, it's a one, right? So on this side, if I'm doing the division, I get one equals, this goes bye-bye. And if we wanna actually just do the math here, we can divide this 4.4 times 10 to the negative second divided by 2.2 times 10 to the negative second. We get a two value, right? Beep. And that exponent just comes along for the ride. So now we simplified it down to this. So I say to myself, okay, two, two raised to what power will get me to number one? Hmm. Well, we could say that in this case, any number that's raised to zero will always equal to one. So two to the zero, that equals one. Three to the zero, that equals one. Four to the zero, that equals one. You know, even a decimal value, 0. 0.5 to the zero, that equals one. So the idea here is that if you have something equal to one, we know that that X value equals zero. So we just found out that order. The order, the X value equals zero. And that's what it secretly means to determine the rate law, find those orders because now we just use that order to write our very own rate law. Here it goes. The rate law would be rate equals K. The only value that you have to plug in for your rate law is the order. So rate equals K times 
the concentration of that reactant, and they told us that the only reactant in this chart was the ethanol, so C2H5OH, and it's raised to that order, which is zero. But now, what did we just say? Well, we said that anything raised to the zero is always going to equal one. So what essentially does this do? Cancels it out. So we could simplify this rate law by saying that the rate law for this one is just rate equals the K value. And that is the answer for the first one. So that is the rate law. Because now we're going to find out the rate constant. And by finding out the rate constant, you always need the rate law first. So since we found that out, now we can determine the rate constant because we use the rate law for our specific case and just plug in a trial. So to find the rate constant, we just use a trial. So maybe I'll say, maybe I'll put it over here because it, it could be, we're gonna find the rate constant and the rate constant is the K value. So we just found out that our rate law for this specific example is rate equals K. Huh. All we have to do is just plug in that, that, that rate value, right? And it doesn't matter what trial you pick. Trial one, trial two, trial three, the rate is all the same. For all of your trials, that rate constant should be constant. So maybe we'll do, I don't know, trial one, so in this case, the rate was 2.0 times 10 to the negative second. And the units here is mole per liter to the negative one, H to the negative one. So we can keep those units. Mole to the liter, negative one, whoop. Mole liter, negative one, hour, which is H, right, to the negative one. And that will equal K. And that is the answer for this one. We didn't even have to do any, any uh, math because that K value, the rate constant, is going to be whatever the rate is. So that's the second part. And now we need to find out, last but not least, the overall order. The overall order is where you just take the sum of all the orders. In this case, our rate law, we, we just had the one reactant, and that one reactant had a order of zero, right? This x equals zero, that was the order. We do not have any other reactants, so the overall order is just going to be that same value for this one. It's going to be zero, because I don't have any other orders to add up. And that is the final answer. So three questions, but we got through it. So we have the rate law, rate equals K. The rate constant, which was the same as the rate, and the overall order of zero. And that is it for this one. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for viewing the video. And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. Just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this channel exists. Uh, we love helping you guys from all over the world. Thank you so much uh, for all your support. And good luck on those tests and quizzes, all right? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.